everybody. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Shane Morrow. I am uh, executive director of a nonprofit here inside the Chattanooga area, which is called Rise. I see so many folks out there uh, that are comfortable being in Chattanooga with me. I also see a lot of folks that are outside of the area as well. What a great night for us to all to be able to get together. I wanted to give you a quick little background about this brand new mission that I'm calling it, about getting the word out about the entertainment industry and listening to individuals uh, that know the walk, know the talk, and doing it successfully. Quick background about Rise and this brand new series. Rise started as a one-day or a one-day festival. We started as a one-day festival. Never did we think we would manifest ourselves uh, into becoming a year-round program uh, that really focuses on cultural preservation, live performances, and education, uh, with a special emphasis on people of color. Um, we've been in existence since 2011, and we have so far since 2014 to now have raised over $600,000 and been able to distribute that with inside the greater Chattanooga region. Um, there aren't many minority-based or led cultural arts organizations here inside this city, and we are one of few, and we're blessed, and we're blessed. And so I thank you all uh, for being here with mm -hmm. us tonight uh, so we can be able to continue uh, to offer these great services. Quick background before I introduce our co-host. The name of this series is called Hustle and Rise. So someone said to me recently, well, you tried to steal it from Hustle and Hustle and everybody else, Hustle and Flow. And I was like, no, no, Hustle and Rise. Diversifying your hustle, defining what that means, and rise. This is a series that's going to be done every quarter. So every three months we're doing it. And we're doing it with notable folks with inside the industry, which will extend from entertainment to music to education industry, because there is something out there for that. And we wanted to be able to start the series off with um, this young woman. And uh, her name is Raynell Swilling. Uh, she is a special kind of girl, special kind of girl. And I'll explain that special kind of girl a little bit later. But let me introduce tonight the one who's going to keep us all in check um, is a brilliant, brilliant organizer. She is the director of cultural tourism here in Chattanooga for our Chattanooga tourism tourism, excuse me, company, um, and a good friend to me. Her name is Donna L. Donna, take it away. All right, Shane, we're getting ready to have a good time. I all see right. nothing, but I see beautiful people uh, from all backgrounds. But I see a lot of black excellence on here, Shane. Yes. <laughs> For it sure. Is, it is it okay to say I feel black excellence today, especially uh <laughs> you said you said the word hustle, and I said, ain't nothing wrong with using the word hustle. It's nothing wrong with hustling every now and then because that's how we make things great. And when I look at Ray Nail's bio, I said, Oh my gosh, it made me want to hustle and step my game up. So <laughs> just reading a little bit of uh Raynell's bio because it is I can say is action packed. She has gone over and beyond uh, in her field, in her industry. And I see a lot of way makers, uh, people that are leading the way here in Chattanooga and beyond. And I'm, I'm excited just to hear her conversation, but I'm excited that you're chiming in tonight. Raynell currently resides in Los Angeles, California. She is a mom to amazing five-year-old twins. She is a television and film writer and producer. Raynell grew up in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and spent summers in Brooklyn, New York. She is a graduate of Northeastern University. After graduating, Raynell moved to Los Angeles. Within a year, she created and sold a television pilot, one of the girls to Quincy Jones, and that went to QDE Productions and Whitney Houston's Nippy Incorporated for CBS. Having made a fan in QDE, QDE Raynell was hired uh, on the QDE NBC half-hour sitcom In the House with Fine LL Cool J. I added Fine to that in case y'all wanted to know, ladies. Fine LL Cool J. Raynell later joined the writing staff of the half-hour series Moesha starring Brandy. Now, she has a lot of other stuff on this bio, 
and I just scratched the surface of what she does. And we're going to just have a conversation because we want to ask her some up close and personal uh, questions today. So Shane, is it okay for us to just have a good conversation? Let's do this. Let's do this. All right. All right. Ray Nell, hello. Uh-oh. Hey. hey. <laughs> Hi. How are you right now? Good. How are you guys? Uh, we are doing good. Hey, we are doing this. I don't know how we're doing this, but we're doing this. <laughs> I'm trying to get my Zoom game together. I don't have it quite together. You don't have your Zoom game yeah. together. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, we can see you. Perfect. Okay. We can't see you right now. We can't see okay. you. Okay. There we go. All right. Yeah, that's better. Boom. Right. So what's up, girly? How are you? I'm well. How are you? I am fantastic. I, I'm, I'm going to shut up a little bit because I got some surprises for you that All we're going right. to uh, put on screen a little bit. But I will say this. Right now, Swilly, it has taken me three years to get you to have a conversation. <laughs> <laughs> for folks that don't know, uh, Raynell was coming to, and actually has come and visited Chattanooga, and uh, we talked then about her coming back and to talk about her experiences and to just be an inspiration of sorts. Don't um, cheat me but, out of my trip. I'm still coming. Are you still coming? <laughs> yeah, I'm still coming. <laughs> so we were, um, we were very fortunate um, to be able to get her to do Zoom, and despite what's going on in our trying times throughout this nation, that we are, we may be, unfortunately not together, but we're uniting tonight on Zoom. And we're really appreciative, Radio, that you took the time to come meet with us today. Happy to be here. All right, Madonna. All right. I, I just want to ask, hey, Raynell, I'm so happy to talk to you after reading your bio and thinking about everything that you have been a part of, at, that what we've grown up watching, what we're still watching. I just want to know, how did you begin your career where were you when you were about five years old or 10 years old and said i want to be a writer i want to be a producer i didn't decide to be a writer until i was out of college so prior to that i was going to go to law school and be a lawyer because that's what i was programmed i, I think my mother's in here she programmed me to believe and think that i was going to go to law school so growing up i was said and thought i was going to go to law school but then once I hit that mark and it was time to go, I was like, wait a minute, I don't want to do that. <laughs> That's not what I want to do. So I decided to check out writing. Many writers, but I just knew it was an interest, you know. I want to do anything but law. So I just tried to figure out what I wanted to do. I was living in Maryland at the time. And I was just like, what do I want to do? What do I want to do? It's not this. Because I was prepping for the LSATs and getting myself together for um, law school. And that's how I decided, let me try writing. So I just picked up the phone. I looked at all these TV shows, Martin. Remember the Martin show was on? Yeah, of so course. I picked up the phone and I called those people up. I looked at the names, look up on the names on the screen. And I, they answered, like people really answered the phone. <laughs> called those people up and I was like, hi, I'm a writer and I want to write on your show. And they were like, who are you? <laughs> and uh, where do you live? Come in. And I was like, oh, I live in Maryland. They were like, okay, well, you have to be in California if you want to meet with us. So, so when you get to California, come and meet with us. And so I did. I came to LA and had a few of those meetings. And that's pretty much how I got started. Wow. I, you know what? That sounds like a, a, a story that is surprising, but mm -hmm. it still was something in you, whether mm -hmm. you were in college, whether you were in school, that deep down inside it was your passion where you always have been creative. You just don't wake up and just be creative <laughs> overnight right now. It's no way. Were you always watching different things to no. you know, inspire you? N not at all. No, no. I, n I never even thought of writing. I mean, I wrote, you know, did the, you know, the common English classes that I actually loved, right. but there was nothing that like, there was nothing that I was inspired by or I don't, I really, I mean, I, when I, when I'm usually asked that question, I just say God, because okay. I can't think of anything else that told me this is what you want to do, you know, and then help me get there, you know, so I always say it's just God, it was God, because, 
you know, I always, in my prayers, I thank him for just leading me on the path to doing what I love. I get to do what I love, you know, and I appreciate that. So I can only say God, because it came at such a late age. And I was, I try not to look back on that, but I think of if I knew, I mean, I would have went to, you know, film school. I would have taken classes. I would have written more, which I didn't. So I, I feel like I'm actually... I'm still learning. I'm still becoming a better writer. Every show I get, everything I do, it gets better and better and better. But if I knew this, you know, in high school, I would have, you know, become a better writer. I would be, you know, I would have gone to film school. So I'm looking, I'm looking at shows that you have been a part of that you've helped write, helped produce LL Cool J's show. I talked about that in the house, Moesha. I mean, these are things we were, we were looking at and being able to relate to, uh, You've written for MTV, Soul Train. When I think about those are major platforms, and you're like, I just came up with it. It just it, God just gave it to me, and God, right, right. Just, yeah, I love me some God, so I know He can just <laughs> give it to you. So I mean, it's a job to get a job. You know, you have to think of every time after I finish one job, it's different than you know if you were you know if you have a, a nine to five and you know that's your job, you have the stability. As a writer, every single time your show is over, you have to get a new job. So talking about hustle, I have still have to hustle. Like it's always a hustle. As soon as your job is over, you don't know what's next, you know? So in terms of what you're saying, every job led to another job because I swear every single job I've had, someone has taken me with them, you know, which is what I've learned that I will always do, you know, but someone will always, they, they've always said, I mean, just literally yesterday, someone called and said, I have a show, you know, so it just, that's kind of how it works. You get on one show and then you just keep going and you keep going and you keep going. Cause it is definitely like really a tight knit. It's really, you know, everything is pretty much, you know, people give you jobs through your resources. It's right. so hard to break in. It's really, really hard to break in and they keep it, they keep the gates real tight, you know? Right. So you just have to, you know, get in where you fit in, but you have to work hard to get every other job. Shame. Got, don't, don't don't stop. I just had a question. I had a question, Mr. Quillen. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. So, you know, I, I hear you. And just like Donna said, you know, you're just like, oh, you know, it just happened, God. Yeah. You know, but I, I I wonder when you talk about the, the network or, you know, the, this this group, let's just be 100. There are not many folks of color, mm-hmm. especially female folk of color, black, that do what you do. Because correct me if I'm wrong, when you look at the statistics inside the entertainment industry, you know, you are a rarity. Yeah, I think we're like 3%. I think we're like a 3% in the entertainment industry, black women. Um, How would that, how does that feel? You know, right? You know, it's like, how does that, how does that feel for you knowing that you're a creator, but also knowing that you, that's knowing that that's a lot on your back for, how you're viewed in the public, but also how you are viewed inside the industry. Am I correct in saying that maybe? Mm -hmm. There's so many things that come with that. Like, I mean, since I got off the plane, I came here because I wanted to create a show, you know, and creating a show, it's like, I get to create jobs. And I still haven't gotten that opportunity, you know, that's coming, but I still haven't, you know, gotten that opportunity because I, I know so many amazing writers and people of color that I would I would hire and you're right every time you go on a show generally there are two of us you'll see two black writers it could be a black show there's like 20 white writers and two black writers and then the two we have to be vetted which is how come I get job from job because they're comfortable with me so no matter what job I take you know they call five people to make sure I'm okay (laughs) you know what I mean like so it's yes like it's it's definitely um so there's that portion but there's also you know being one of the few black people I had to to come to the realization when I first started writing and you speak of LL Cool J show when I first started writing on that show they would ask me questions like well you know what is uh what, what does LL mean when he keeps saying round the way girl and I was highly offended by that I'm like you should have hired some more you know I'm the only black person in this room this is a black show there are 15 of us and you keep looking to me for the hip-hop slang and I, I didn't write to become your hip-hop uh, translator you know I want to write like these people write so I was offended by that but eventually what I learned is you know what I don't mind teaching them because you know it's just part of the it's part of why I'm hired that's the truth you know every show will hire a black person for that you know so it's like I had to find comfort in that. I also had to find comfort in 
you know, I felt like responsible. If a show, like if there was a show that I felt was offensive to, to black people, I would be upset for the whole episode, you know? I feel guilty, you know, feel guilty talking to the directors. I feel guilty talking to the talent, but I don't have the power to tell them this show is offensive or this is offensive, you know, offensive. Now I I can speak up more, but for a year, for like 10 years, I, I couldn't, I did not have that voice and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't speak to that. But now I can, you know, now, now I do. Right um, now, let, let me jump in right here. Cause that, that is, that is perfect. A, a perfect segue. And Shane, I appreciate you for bringing, you know, that up, but it's people that are all over the world that are watching you right now. And they may be in their particular space, whether it's their corporate job, whether they're a writer, whether they're a freelance photographer or a consultant, and they have always been leaned on as the quote unquote, black voice in the room. You know, I always tell people during a speech, if I'm doing it, don't lean on that one black person. They don't, they're not the newer of all black people in the world. You know, make sure you have a selective group of friends. Yeah. So I, I ask you, where did you get your voice and your confidence now where, where you didn't have it then? Um, time and now I have more options, you know. Um, I, I mean, you know, we'll come around to another show because there have there was a time when I actually spoke up too much and wasn't asked back to a job. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you have to find that balance because if you if you have if you're too loud, if you have if you interject too much, they don't want you in the room. So you you have to pick your battles and you have to figure out, you know, which fight is worth the fight. You know, wow. um, small example like on the Marlin show, they had um, one of the actors she couldn't pronounce and she you know i came in and i read a script but i'm like what is this she can't she's an educated woman and she's saying ambulance library like all and they thought i mean they were on the floor they thought it was hilarious and i'm looking around the room i'm like but why because it's funny and i'm like but why 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 does she have to speak like this and i know we do i know it's funny but this character that hasn't been her character this entire two seasons it's not her character so just because it's funny the joke is that's a joke we're gonna laugh at her we're not gonna laugh with her and that's something that they could not understand they're like no you're killing the joke so you you get that you know you get that you're killing the joke but um you just feel passionate about certain things and you speak up and there's sometimes where you let things go like you know you feel completely you leave the room feeling so depleted and disrespected not only as a woman but sometimes as a black person you know but again, you just pick your battles because you have to know the images are so important. They, I, you know, they look at, no offense to Housewives and, and those shows, but that's what they reference. So I will sit in a room with 13 white guys who are referencing NeNe and tell me, well, NeNe said it. And what can I say? <laughs> you know? right. I have to say, okay, well, maybe we could write it like this. Or sometimes I have to actually go leave and rewrite it and present it. And they're like, oh, okay, this works. You know, so have you, have you ever turned down uh, an assignment? Have you ever said, you know what, I don't feel comfortable in the room here? You oh yeah, absolutely. Away? Yes, definitely. A few a few jobs, you, you sometimes you have to, you know. Um, but yes, I have. I won't say which ones because there. You know, I was, don't say which one. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, hey, oh, yeah. I was, I was, I, mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to know specifics. But yeah. was it something that offended you racially? Or was um, it something that it offended you as a woman or you just didn't like it overall? Actually, um, there are two things because sometimes you can, you can have a show that, um, that you, you know, the showrunner, people get reputations, you know? And so sometimes the showrunner, you'll know if the showrunner is a difficult person to deal with, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you don't want to work with them. And so I've, I've done it I, I, only twice where I know that I couldn't, you know, work with them. So I said, no, thank you. I had to pass. <laughs> well, I got, I, I'm going to ready to bring you back, to bring you back so we can get a good laugh. I was going through some of all these amazing things that you have done over the years. And I said, <laughs> this one particular one here, I thought was kind of funny because I remember when you took this assignment and I was like, what, what 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 is it all about right now and uh break it down for me and of course you know 
that it happened because half the time I couldn't understand. So let me show you and I'll show everybody else that I want to quickly talk to you about this particular thing I'm going to show you. Oh, goodness. <laughs> We got over 20 countries represented here tonight. It doesn't matter what language you speak, because the language of hip hop is universal. We're gonna be the first crew to bring free run into hip hop. It's crazy. If we wanna win this competition, I'm who's gotta be fresh. I have the dream to do this, and that's all that matters. How hard is it to be on time? Since when do you speak for the crew? I just want to shake the hand of last year's champion. It's my pleasure. I also want you to get a chance to meet this year's champion. If we're going to win this, I need you to stay focused. You don't always handle my business. She's our competition. Everything is about you. The only thing in my mind right now is winning. If you want to step up, I'll score you right here. She's not going with you. You know dancing is our only way out. <laughs> talk about that was that your first film um that film was my yes it was my first film my only film my biggest lesson in this industry um i wrote i wrote i wrote the beats of that film on my wall and the writer who got the writing credit came to my house to visit me about a project and stole it and went and pitched it to the network what and, <laughs> and that is the story of you got served that's how it got made and yeah yes so yeah. shane knows that that that's part of the industry you get beat up a lot you know but um yeah that's that story shane knows that story but then i mean i still want to i still feel like i can do another one do it better i, I will that. you know but yeah that's the story what, of that. what did what are you, what have you done differently since that happened uh, I don't, I don't, I never have a project up on my wall. If anyone walks in my office, my room, none of that. And, but my biggest lesson I think in that is just, um, you were talking about confidence and knowing your place. Um, so he wrote the story, but when, when the script was so horrible that he actually came back to me and told me what happened and asked me if I could rewrite it for the studio. And I did, because at the time I thought, well, now it's going to get well and he said it you know this is the only time it's going to get made now it's going to get made so we have someone to buy it so will you write it so i met with the president of, of screen gems and he was just like you have to take credit for this why won't you take credit and i didn't because i just knew that um i promised the guy i said i'll let you take credit for this one and next time because i was young i just got here and i was like oh i thought it happened all the time girl i thought i can just write another one you know how jay-z says make another hit you can make right. another one. So right. I, thought I, was just making, I had no idea how difficult it was. I mean, it's short of a miracle to get a television show on, to get a film made, you know. So I just thought it was that easy because it came so easy, easily. I just thought I could do it again, you know. Right. Um, so that's why I gave it away so easy. So now I know, I've learned, I've lived, I've learned that um, nothing in this industry comes easy. So with film, with television i learned that i can't give the, anything away uh if michelle crook is on here she's gonna disagree because she says i give everything away but um yeah i um i learned then that you know just my value and right. not to give things away yeah there, but I, and i still want to do that project i'm like i'm still gonna do it uh, you know we believe in you i do <laughs> you, you, i think about there's so many tv shows out right now so many movies versus when the uh, when you had when the, when the show Moesha was out, when LL Cool J show was out, we only had maybe three or four channels. Yes, then, now then cable is extended now. So mm -hmm. I, I asked you this question because you know Shane and I were talking about it uh, when he was actually on my radio show. But I ask you, has the industry changed? Oh my goodness! And how has it changed? And then I also see James uh, McKissick put a question in there saying has reality tv forced it to change what you uh -huh. know what does it look like now and especially for african americans for black people okay so now there are so many shows there's i mean that's positive there are pros and cons to everything of course but um 
by there being so many shows, there are definitely a lot of new young writers out here. Um, the so that's good because they're different opportunities, they're different genres, you know. Reality TV, to me, reality TV, I I I I um I compare t- reality TV to Tyler Perry. It's the same, they've had the same effect on the industry to me in terms of it's quick, a quick fix. You know, uh, you don't get the quality, but you can have something to watch. You know, it's like eating fast food almost. It's fast food television, you know. Like he's getting ready to shoot 23 episodes. And I think he's doing that. Uh, He's shooting 23 episodes and he's doing it in just a few weeks, you know. And it takes the quality out of the material. It takes, you know, because it, like, for example, the show that I was just on, Cherish Today, we only had eight episodes, but we shot those episodes in, uh, it, you know, we shot them um, in month, like four months, I think. And with that, you could see the character growth. You could see the relationship, you know, the, the relationship grow, the actors, they got to know each other back to better. By episode eight, I believed everything about them, you know, and Tyler's like, literally you shoot i think they shoot like four episodes a week i mean a day or something so it's just it's just the quality is not the same you know in reality so that's what a lot of studios for a long time expected out of that's what they expected out of black writers and directors and producers give us tyler perry make it quick make it you know don't put the time into it don't hire the the top writers just write it give it to us shoot it you know um, so with this new um, model of Amazon and you have own and you have all these networks, the beauty of that is you do have uh, more artists getting to tell their stories, you know, and getting to tell them like they want. Because television still, there's just a, a structure, you know, they have this, you know, like they have three acts, four acts, and that is the template. You can't go out of it. But if you think about shows now, you're like, oh my gosh, you know, you have Killing Eve, the cables, the cable networks. It allows you, a lot of these, these writers will write just with no commercials, like Atlanta. You know, he does what he wants to do. He hires who he wants to hire. You have Ava DuVernay. She gets to hire who she wants to hire. So these are black rooms, which was never heard of. It, it never happens. If you think of all your favorite shows, the rooms were not black. I don't care if it was Cosby, if it was Martin, if it was in the house, Moesha, those rooms were not black, you know. But now with the cable network, they give a lot of these writers, um, you know, they give them voice and they, you have, you don't have that network executive over your head giving you so many notes telling you what the audience wants what the audience needs and what i really love about television nowadays for for african-american television is you really they because it's not white execs they don't make you dumb it down you know Mm -hmm. that is what they used to make us do they the audience won't get it you know explain it explain you know so I love, I love cable television and I love telling the stories now. They, we get to tell real true stories, you know, more personal stories. And a white exec doesn't give us the note to tell us, well, I don't get it and so the world won't get it. But this isn't your audience. We are, my audience will get it. I'm writing for myself. So I know, you know, so I think that's the difference. I really, I really appreciate um, cable. People want to know this you know, especially the writers and the the producers that are on the line right now, like what sparks you? How do you go about, uh, Emily Kate Boyd put it there, how do you go about starting your script from the beginning? What does that look like? Okay, I'm gonna go back one more thing about network, the difference between network and all these other show, all these other stations though. Uh Network television, you can get rich. So if you, if you work television, and you create a show, if you create a show for a network, NBC, ABC, just those members, it's only if you do just CBS, I'm not talking HBO, I'm not talking own, I'm, if you just go ABC, NBC, CBS, Fox, not as much, but kind of Fox, you create a show for those networks, you will be rich. Wow. You create a show for any of the cables and stuff, it's just a job, you know? Yeah. And this is the same with writing. Like now, you know, I write for OWN um, or Netflix and it's a paycheck. But it, when I write on uh, NBC, ABC, whatever, you get paid. So there is the difference. So if you want all the notes, you want the structured, you know, television series, you write for a network. 
but if you want to just tell your own personal story if you want to live in the story and let it breathe and just write beautiful tv you create your own stuff and you create it on a, a you create it for a smaller studio or you create it for a network or something wow so. She has I got a question, Miss Willard. She got to yeah. answer the creative question first. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay. So no, what no, sparks no. me? Um, life, you know, life and experience. I take everything from, from pieces of my life and I, and I write about it, you know, um, because I think, and, and it's interesting, the things that, I, the real things that happen to me that I write about are what people talk about the most, you know, I find in, in you know, in, I guess my life is kind of crazy because uh, <laughs> my stories, um, they're just, I guess they're interesting. Everybody thinks their life's interesting, but I find that when I write from my heart or real situations, um, it, A, it's, it feels better and I'm more proud of it than when I make up stuff because I can make up stories. If you tell me, listen, write this, I can write it. But this particular show that I was just on, um, cherish the day. Um, I got to take so much from my my life, and it just felt good. It's easier to write, and I just enjoy it. And I haven't done that in yet, probably since Moesha. I haven't been able to just write, you know, mm -hmm. um, because sometimes you you know your audience or you know your boss, so you you write for who you have to write for. Like if you like if you're like I don't want notes tonight. I want to go home and go to bed early. Then you're gonna write something that you know Donna would want to read and enjoy. And it may not ring true. It may not be real, but I'm going to write it because I know you love it. I know your sense of humor. I know what kind of jokes you like. So mm -hmm. I'm going to write it just so Donna will love it, read it, and let me go home. You know, but sometimes you may want to write a story that Donna may not understand, but the, uh, you know the audience or you know the actor. Like sometimes I write for a particular actor and that gets you in trouble too because then the actors fall in love with you and they come to you for notes and they want you to write stuff for them, but your boss doesn't get a, doesn't get it, doesn't understand, and your boss is like a little annoyed. So you have to pick, you know, who are you writing for? Mm -hmm. So every time you write and every show you write, the experience is different and it depends, you know. But for myself, when I write, what sparks me is my are my own personal stories. But you can't always do that because it's you're writing, you're a writer for hire. You're not writing for your pleasure. Ray, you know. When I watched uh, Casey Undercover, and only because I watched it because of you, uh, when I watched Casey Undercover, there was a moment inside of that particular show that was uh, huge. And it was huge because it was all the writers, all the, uh, the producers, the everyone that behind the scenes were people of color. Can you explain that story a little bit? So that's the, that's the show that I told you they didn't ask us back because we were... Um, so after every season, when you finish a show, so two things have to happen. The show has to get picked up. So every time you finish a season, they can tell you, you know, you leave and you don't know if the show's coming back. And if it does come back, your boss always has the option to keep you on or let you go. I've never been let go, but on Casey Undercover, he was like, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to have you guys back. We were like, wait, what? <laughs> but that was one of the show where all the writers were white. This is a black family, and they would have this child cursing her grandmother out. They would have her just hitting her father, like just, oh, you're so stupid, hitting him upside the head. And I would constantly tell my boss, you, you, we don't do that. You can't do that. It's just disrespectful, uh -huh. you know. And he would be so annoyed by that. He was just like, Ugh. So that was the show. That was what I was talking about in terms of they did not ask us to come back. And so what Shane is speaking of that, so, somebody is plaiting their hair. Yes, and we're going to ask for everybody, if you didn't see earlier, to keep your mute or keep your mute button on. It just helps with the flow of the show, and it helps with the thing with the quality of the sound. But go ahead, Rita. Okay, so you know, we um, we weren't asked back, but then about midway through the season, we get a phone call, and it's our boss, and he he asked us to if we would think about coming back because Zendaya wanted us to come back to the show. So we wanted to say no, but we needed a job. So <laughs> we went back. And when we went back, that was a time, Donna, where I thought, well, maybe we won't voice our opinion as much because that's why we weren't asked back, you know, 
like let them if no one else is complaining sometimes because disney they love the show the viewers love the show you know but zendaya missed our voice because she could tell the difference when we're gone wait what now i'm slapping my grandmother what's up with that you know what i mean like get those girls back in the room so we go back and when we went back we wrote um we came up with an episode where zendaya was because the show is about an undercover family undercover uh uh family and um so when we went back, we wrote the episode that she was her actually her grandmother was undercover and she didn't know. So the first black undercover spy was supposed to be like her grandmother. So that was like so Disney, they went crazy. They were like, oh my gosh. So we had all this for the first time ever, Disney actually dealt with race on their network, you know, where they talked about, you know, the family talked about being black, they talked about history and all those things. So it ended up being huge and it was interesting because we got fired but then asked to come back and got to make history on there so that was great and interesting what what i like is that you keep showing up that's been one of my life mottos you keep showing up and for people that are on the zoom call today and they're thinking shoot i might as well not do it if i'm gonna if it's gonna feel like i do when i go to my everyday job or you know i, I like your person your perseverance so what does what does that look like in a nutshell for somebody that's saying, you know what, I don't, I don't know where to go and where to start now. I'm afraid of what everything that she's talking about. Well, if you, you have to have perseverance to be a writer because it kicks your butt when it's bad. You have to work so hard at it. So when it's good, it's amazing. It's beautiful. Like the experience is I, I mean, I can't compare it to anything else, but when it's bad, it's bad. So the perseverance has, it comes with a passion. It's like something that you love so much that I can't not show up because I, there's nothing else that I want to do. And I, it's not that I even have to try to show up. It's just, I innately have to do it because I love writing so much and you have to take the good with the bad. There's so much, there's so many things about it that I love that you just take the bad when it's bad. You just get back up because you know that there'll be, you know, the silver lining is there. And that silver lining is when you get to write things you love, when you, when you relate to characters, when you write on a show, talking about showing up, it's like, I'm not writing on this Disney show for a kid show. I didn't want to do that, but I needed a job. And at the time I had no other offers. So I took it. And then it was such an amazing experience. And the young lady, you know, went on to become she's such an amazing artist and i know i work with her again so from every experience even the rejections there's beauty in there because um you know you learn lessons and you meet people and so every job there's something to take with you you know even the bad ones you know you got something shay yeah 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 hey Raydell. um Cherish the day. We got a couple of questions that came up about cherish the day. Mm -hmm. um, I want to show. This, I just want to show a little bit of it, and then from there we want to talk about it. If that's cool. Yes. Hold on for one second. Since I met you, all I want to do is be with you. Don't you know that? Yeah, that was quick. Let me ask you a question right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to find the quickest one. I, I, I was in awe of the show. Uh, I know that the eight episode that you know I shared with you, I I, I dove into it, dove out of it, um, but I was so impressed by the by the the journey of the actors, but your 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 selection, the actors themselves, Cicely Tyson. I guess let me lead up to my uh to my fan out question because I was trying to keep it real good, but that's a, you know what, uh, for folks that don't know, full disclosure, Raydell is my family. Um, so I'm just going to talk like we're family. So right now, look, yes. Cicely Tyson, yes. what was that all about, man? Because it was like, 
<laughs> you didn't tell me she was going to be. I had no clue. So when I saw Cicely Temple, ah, I started <laughs> crying. What was it like working with, like, like the heavy hitters, Quincy Jones? What was that all like? That was, um, Cicely is, she's magical, you know? Mm-hmm. Every time, like, to remember your lines, she's 90 years old, and to remember your lines, talking about make, what, what inspires you and what sparks you, that, and then she tells stories. So you just sit at her foot, and she just tells stories about, you know, just industry Hollywood stories, and so that was inspiring, but... Um, to work with her, it just made me want to be great, right, great, because we knew from the beginning that she would, she would be a part of the show. So mm. that made us step up, like, and also even writing for Oprah, it's like, we, I mean, we got, she's gonna be in the table read, so we don't want to disappoint, you know. So we combed over those scripts, and I mean, this show, period, um, just made me become a better writer because I saw things through different lens, a different lens. I was, first of all, it's my first time writing drama. Well, I wrote drama for one little project before, but so now I'm, I've moved into the drama world, which I love so much more than comedy. Um, and really? dr- comedy, like there, like there are so few black folks in comedy. It's a different muscle, but I, um, so writing for her, it was just, it, oh God, it was, it felt great. You know, I loved, I loved every minute of it. And she, she goes over every line and she comes back to you with her notes. She's very particular. Like she's so astute and so alert. It was just like working with a, with a 20 year old with better notes and more experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Donna, I know that we all have much time left. And I told, uh, I told Raynell that, you know, I'll keep it down a little bit. Cause you know, we could talk for hours, you and I. We can. But, I'm, I'm but... having a good time. I'm like, I don't even want to leave her. <laughs> well, let me ask this. Someone asked a quick, and I don't know if you can answer this quickly, and then I want you to um, just uh, give us some, uh, give us some of your thoughts on just living. But right now, there's a quick question um, that was, can you speak to more about why writing drama more than comedy, you know, was something that you were, uh, you know, okay. you said that. Okay, well, um, so comedy, you, you you don't get to tell the story as much. So you have every every um, every episode. You know you have your acts, your three acts or four acts, depending on the structure. And for comedy, every time you finish an act, you have to hit it. You have to hit but you have to hit timelines. You have to hit buttons. You have to hit. You have to have the jokes for the actors. And so. The jokes are more important than the story in comedy. You have to um, quickly get, usually you you forget about the story and it's just more comedy. You focus on the comedy. Like, I mean, you don't have a full arc when it comes right. to comedy. You're just writing for the joke. You have to hit the buttons. You have to hit the timeline. And for me, it's more pressure because sometimes I don't feel like being funny or sometimes I don't feel like, writing jokes and depending on the like there's some shows like for example bernie mac show it what there weren't a lot of jokes he was talking and he's funny but most comedians most comedy shows the actors are not funny and they depend on those jokes and they get mad if the jokes aren't funny enough and i'm like well if you were funnier it would make my line funnier but (laughs) so you just have to work to me you have to work and sometimes it doesn't ring true. Like if you have a comic gen- oh, like I worked with Raven Simone once and I just couldn't believe it. You, I mean, literally we had a paper towel run and this woman made it hilarious. Yeah, so did. you have, you have the, if the actors work with you and you're writing the jokes, then it's less of a, you know, a headache. But I just, I don't enjoy it. I don't enjoy writing jokes. I just don't like it. Oh, and, and I love telling stories. And I didn't get to it until literally this year, over 20 years in the business. And I didn't realize um, I like the character relationships. Also, because comedy, you're not really work, you're not really playing off of the characters. Right. You're playing off of the jokes. So there's that part. And I don't want to just kill. I mean, there's great comedic television, but I just prefer 
drama. I like telling stories. I like when there's a story arc. I like when I'm writing to something and I'm, I'm not writing to the joke. I'm writing to the story. So if I'm writing to the end of the Zoom, I know I want to end it leaving on a high note. I want you guys to feel like you were inspired or encouraged. But if it's a comedy, I want to write, I'm going to say something funny and it doesn't have to make sense. I don't care how you feel. You just have to laugh. So for me, that's what I prefer. Now, I have friends, and we've, we have this conversation. My friend Arthur, he loves comedy. He's like, I don't care. It's all about the jokes. Who cares about the story? People need to laugh. So yeah, to each his own. But for me, I prefer drama. I got two more that will leave you be. OK. You have started from? The bottom now I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about the bottom, Dre. But I will say this. that. You know, you've done a lot of different shows, you know, for folks that want to check out more of the shows that she's done, you know, I'll go ahead and go to our Facebook uh, page. I think that we had a listing of all the stuff that you've been actively involved in. Um, what was one of your favorite shows and who was one, and keep in mind how I'm phrasing, one of your favorite actors to work with? Okay. We're on the same page, Shane. I had it written down. Did you have it written down, down? I'm sorry. <laughs> no, that's perfect. Jeez, that's a hard question. Um, mm. Okay, I'll break it down. Outside of who is outside of Sicily, who really inspired, you know, it sounds like, you know, you just had to love to seeing this legendary uh, spirit uh, do what she does. Or who did you like working with the most? Right. Oh gosh, every show I, you know, um, I don't know. That's a hard question. I don't know. Um, I, listen, I feel like um, every show that, like I said, every show there's something about it that I really like. My my least favorite experience of writing television, my worst experience, my her most horrific experience was writing on the Cleveland show. Um, which was an animated project. It was on Fox. It was horrible for so many reasons. Like, I, I mean, it was just every day going to work. It was hell. I hated it. I think I learned the most on that show. It was my, my best learning experience because the thing about that show is Seth MacFarlane, he's a creative genius. And to push, it, put, it taught me so much. It made me such a better writer because it taught me to push. It taught me to... Every time I, when I finish a script now, because of that experience, I go back and I rewrite and I push and I say, I could take, well, then it's like taking a joke. He takes a joke and he may write the joke over five or six times. Whereas I was the way we were taught, you, you write it, you pitch it and you have your own jokes inside your head on the side. But no, you're, even your best joke, you keep pushing, you keep pushing, keep pushing. Um, so there was that. Um, experience but my favorite I think my favorite show because it's more experience as opposed to writing writing for someone or but the my my favorite show probably to write on may have been Moesha because I was so um I was young and the show itself was great it was a great it was just fun it was fun because I, I was you know it was probably the only time I ever wrote about myself and my peers and my, you know, we were, I was writing what, what she was living. I was doing what she was doing. And I was like, this is cool. I'm getting to go home and go party and then come home and come to work and write about it. You know, I'm getting to, you know, go out and have a bad breakup and, you know, I could make the guy a jerk because this is what I'm dealing with. You know what I mean? So that was awesome. And I, I, I live for the moment when I get to do that again, I get to, I want to do it again as a mom. I want to write from that experience. I want to do it again as, you know, an older woman, you know, those experiences. But now, because like you're saying with the cable television, I can probably do that again, but they don't really see us. So writing for me is only a side character or, you know, we don't really have shows like us, even though we are the biggest market, you know, but the e executives don't look like us, so they don't let us create shows about us. So, um, yeah, I can't, I don't have one favorite. I've had fun with so many people. Every experience was different, um, I but do I, I don't really have a favorite. I've interviewed Brandy too. Uh, yeah. interviewed with her, not work with her. And the experience, is, uh, experience was just like yours. 
So it's, it's crazy. <laughs> can, can I ask her this question, Shane? I know we got to wrap things up, but I do want to ask you this. This is your downtime. This is time where you're, you're with family, you're at home. They're at family, they're at home with, with family, they're at home. What are you doing right now? Uh, I, I mean, there's never downtime. You're always thinking about what's next because you have to, you know? Um, so I'm still at night, still writing. I always write. I'm always writing and always dreaming of, you know, writing that perfect project. Always. And ne there's never just a silence when I lay down, I'm always thinking about, I go to sleep thinking about what will I write next? How, you know, who am I going to pitch to or what am I going to do? So the life of a writer is to, to never really I shouldn't say every writer because I, but I haven't met and just talking to my friends who are writers. Um, I don't know when you get that downtime. I don't think, I don't know that you do, you know, but it's, I, I don't have, a, I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. You know, I love, I love it. So. What, one more. What do you watch? What do you watch first? What's your favorite show? Uh, how about this? I don't watch television. I, say, I knew you were gonna say that. <laughs> I, knew, I knew exactly. I, knew. I read. I I do a lot of reading if I if I can. Like I have a one. Well, nowadays with the boys, I have one book that I've been carrying around for a year, and I keep starting over and starting over and starting over. But um, yeah, I don't really. I don't watch television. I uh, want to. Bird. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, Go ahead. Yes, yeah, little bird did tell me that you started collecting art. <sighs> Who? I, I've heard that oh you know God. you're you're really deep now in uh, collecting uh, African American art right now. Yeah, uh, yeah. So now, I, now I just have to really keep working so I can buy it. So <laughs> this is great. I can't wait. It's so fun. I'm like, okay, so that's true. So now James has taught me how to buy at art auctions, and I'm already thinking about the character that will be shopping at auctions. You know, <laughs> Ooh, that that's is it. Good. Now that's the the latest character. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> oh, yeah. Any, what words do you want to leave for us, and uh, as we get ready to get you off this? Uh, well, off do this you have any too? writers? Do you have any writers that want to ask any questions? One did. One wanted to know how do you pitch? How do you pitch your script to someone? Okay, pitching has probably been my least favorite thing about being a writer uh because i don't do this like i've not i don't I, i'm not I, I don't like to say i'm not good at something but i just like to write i don't like to talk i don't like to speak so it's not been my thing so personally what i've done pitch wise is i always write i always write my projects i write them and i get them to whomever i need to get them to i don't pitch much that's my honest opinion i don't i don't pitch much and my lawyer just told me on Friday, we're just talking, and uh, he just told me, he goes, you don't even have to pitch anymore, because I was like saying something, I was like, I'm not ready for pitch season, whatever, he was like, guess what, you don't even have to pitch anymore, so I've, I've managed to skip that process, because I wasn't great at it, so now I won't have to pitch anymore, I just will write projects from now people on. Co people come to you, bottom line. Yep, but I mean, what I am doing too is that I just signed up for a class because I do want to, I want to still uh, learn to pitch better because now that I am going to be a showrunner, I want to be able to like really artistically pitch my, my show ideas to my staff. You know, I think it's an art. Pitching is an art. Here we are. That's the theme chain art. Pitching is, it's really an art. So if you're good at it, I mean, just perfect it and jam with it. Because I love a good pitch. I love it. I, I mean, and people appreciate it. Now, pitching in the room is different. I pitch in the room all day long to, you know, I pitch story ideas and I pitch whatever. But pitching a pilot or pitching a story, I don't, I don't feel comfortable, like, just telling the whole world. Like, I, that's just not my comfort zone. Right. But it's necessary. I surpassed it. Thank God. I think we had one more question in the chat. Okay. Can can you see it, uh, Shane? Uh, 
Shane, I missed it. I think that's all we have. But I do want to say I'm sipping on my, can you see this? Oh! Water, so roar. Yeah. Say hello to you. We have a, we have a nice little, we have a nice little uh, a bunch of us out here. We have oh! Nice little, hello, yeah. hello, hello, hello. Yeah. Cool. Um, but so for any writers, I just say, listen, um, it's a dream that's, it's a dream that's attainable. If you, if you, if you want it, then nothing should stop you from getting it because you can get it. You just, I mean, so I know, I actually have a friend who I just spoke to. She, we came out here together and we've been, she's been uh, teaching and she's been working on award shows and she's been doing everything. And she just got a job after over 20 years. And it's that hard. Some people come out here and they sell a show. I mean, like I sold a show, but it doesn't matter because you have to keep the momentum. But some people, it takes a long time, but it's so worth it. It's so worth it. It's just, it's, it's, um, it's fun. It's hard. It's definitely hard. But if it's your passion and if it's what you love and if you can't sleep because that's all you do is think about writing, then you have to do it and you have to follow that dream and you just have to work hard. You have to work as hard to become a writer as you do when you are a writer. It's just it's just that competitive because if it were that easy, everybody would come and everyone would do it, you mm -hmm. know. So don't give up. And uh and Bakari's on here. Bakari know Bakari knows. I always say you have to have fun. That's the thing. I kind of stopped having fun at some point. I just started working so hard and working so much that it wasn't fun anymore. And so that's my new my new quest is to just find fun in it again. You know, just have fun because it should be it, you know, it's not that serious. It's just the job. So yeah. All right. Go for it. Okay, I think that's where did Shane go? He said his computer just went dead. Oh wow. Okay. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. God. He's he's trying to get the um <laughs> Okay. So well I I guess I will wrap everything up. Uh you've gotten a lot of compliments in the chat. Everybody's saying thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate you. Um and oh wait, hold on. Emily wants to know how do you start a script once you commit? What's the beginning look like for you? Um, how do you start a script? First of all, you nowadays there's so many resources. There are so many resources. You guys have no reason. I had to look at the television and write the script by hand, word for word. I'm sitting there trying to write Mark Mar Martin. Gina says this. Tashina says this. You guys, there's no excuse for you because now there's so many resources. You go online. You look up the show you want, and they have, there's all these different scripts. You just write script, the script for whatever show it is you want to write. Whatever show that is, you look it up, and you also look up shows like it. For example, I say Marlon, because someone said they like Marlon on here. Marlon is a family show. And don't only write black shows. Come on, you have to, you have to show them that you can write anything. So you, you, um, you look up the show, the type of show. So if it's comedy, you look up a comedy. You look it up. You look up Marlon, you look up, uh, you look up any family comedies that are out there. I don't watch TV, so I don't know. But look up family comedies and get the script. Study the scripts. They are online. You can go online. You can look it up. You can look at the format. I had no idea what a format was. There's so many script writing books. You have to study the craft. It's imperative. You have to study the craft because there are 5,000 people who are doing what you want to do. You have to study the craft and you can't, you can't have an ego because it, you get rejected so much in television. So you, so how do you start it? You read the script, you read different scripts and then you outline your script, whatever it is you want to write, you have to outline it, outline whatever your idea is, outline the idea first and then look at the script so you can see how to write it. Look at the format, look at the style because Anything that you turn in, you want to make sure that the format, and there's so many script competitions nowadays. NBC has one, CBS has one. You guys have to submit because my last three or four jobs, those kids came from the, the, um, the different um, script competitions. So 
that's how you start your script. You outline it. First, you outline it. You study the style of the, the show, and then you write. That's what you do. You can do cards if you do. Well, I'm not in my office, but you can do cards. You can write cards and beat by beat by beat. Um, yeah. And you can take online script classes. Now that Sundance, right now, Sundance has a thing called Sundance Collabo. You look up Sundance Collabo and they have free master classes. Take those master classes. Like there's so much available to you now. Take those master classes. Learn, learn from the greats. Right now, whoever, whatever show it is you love, you can study their writing. If it's Shonda Rhimes, study Shonda. Study all her shows. I mean, look up what she look up her deal at networks. What is she doing next? What's her style? And send your stuff to Shonda. Why not? You know, don't stop. Just whatever you want, go after it. The sky's the limit. Don't have a fear and don't have egos because all the people who have egos don't have jobs. You know, you just can't do it here because people are doing crazy stuff. My last job, they brought us some chili. This girl wanted a job and brought Ava some chili. So, yo, do what you got to do to get, get it, you know, as long as you feel comfortable about it. But, yeah. So, you. wait. So, I'm on. back. I'm back. Uh, for folks, I'm underneath Zora's day, Ray, um, <laughs> because my computer went dead. And I know we need to wrap up, but I know that everybody has a lot of questions. And so Donna, can you, hear, can you hear me, Donna? Yeah, I got you. Okay, okay. So again, I'm okay. Yeah, I'm okay. If anybody needs to jump off, they can go. I'm good. If I, I'm, I'm okay. Okay. Are you really? I just want to make sure that the kids get any questions answered that they have because. Oh, so there's a lot of there's a lot of adults inside of here. So like I see, that, I'm looking at the I'm looking at I'm looking at some people. I see them writing stuff down. No. That's why I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> here. Someone, someone did ask the question about how do you protect your creation? Mm. You can't. You really can't. Again, God, because like all you, everything you do, you have to sell it first and you also have to work first. So you have to pitch an idea and pray that no one takes it, right? When you pitch, it's like music. You make the music, you create it. You let listen, people listen to your beats and you just hope and pray that no one takes the beat before, you know, before so you no, get it out no there. copywriting, no attorney. It's not real. Don't okay. spend your money on those, saving those ideas because they do that to make you feel better, but if someone, I mean, I had it happen to me, my first, my first, even my first spec, I wrote a living single spec and, you know, I gave it to the producers and she, she told me, listen, girl, that was good. And, um, I don't know, I had an idea like that. So, um, I'm writing it now. And I was like, wait, what? Wow. <laughs> you know? So that's the part of writing, writing, you just keep writing and you keep writing until it lands and it will, it will. But it just sometimes takes time, you know. Mm. Where, did, where did Shane go? I'm right here. I am right here, back in oh, action. Was, uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> okay. Uh, 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 peace to my 18 year old uh, that allowed me to use her phone uh, right. when my computer went dead because obviously I'm not as tech savvy as my kid. Um, let me say this to you right now is that. Um, and let's wrap it up by saying, first and foremost, thank you. Um, you didn't have to do this. I know um, I, I beg for you to do it. I know you're also busy. Um, do you plan to come to Chattanooga? You know, you're open to uh, taking this invitation for you and the fam. And I uh, say it publicly that, you know, come on, come on here. Um, and outside of connecting with family, um, let me connect you with more of the community because you have so much to share, you know. I remember when I realized that my family was at another place and I was like, oh my God, this is for real. And I'm going to share a little bit of this story is that we got this limo that came to Connecticut and uh, we got all in this limo. Raydell has set everything up and I'm like, oh my God, it's a, we, we're driving this style. And we went down to, if you remember this, we went down to Jersey uh, to see a live concert uh, because at that time, you were working with Whitney. And so I've never thought in my life, now I've seen Whitney uh, when I had, you know, $2 in my pocket. So I was up there in the bleeding seat, still, you know, understanding what's going on with the magic. But Raynell had got us all the way up in the front row. Ooh. And I'm supposed to go tell the story right there. But I was, I was in absolute awe not of the concert 
of of but of my of, of my cousin, um, because I realized that she had gotten to another point and she's gotten comfortable being there. She never took it for granted, and she never takes it for granted uh, of what she does. You know, you always gave back. You know, and I'm just so appreciative that at our age that we are still uh, connected. And I and I think we're just getting started. We have so much more to do. This is still the beginning. Hold on, I just have to talk to Felician. Hold on, Felician. Um, how do you pitch a show and episode? of an existing show without them deciding to use your work. I know you spoke on experience. Okay, so um, you can't, you have to, to pitch. You can, First of all, you can't, pitch on, you can't pitch for a show that's already on the air. You can write a, a spec, and there are two spec, type of specs to write. You can either write a spec for existing show or you write a, a new show, your own pilot. So um, if you write a spec for an existing show, there's no way to protect it. You, you can pitch it to them, but generally specs are only for other people to read. So for example, if Shane has a television series, you can let him read your spec. It's so rare that they buy them, but he may hire you for another show because they have to service the writers that write. And they usually have about 15 or 20 writers with all ideas. So for them to buy an outside idea, it just really, really, really rarely happens because they have to service their writers that they pay. But I could read your script and be like, oh my God, I love it. And you'll be great for another show. And people like to see that you know voices and all those things. So the, the spec has to still be amazing. And it shows that you know character and it shows that you have a voice or if you could write that you have drama if you want to write drama or that you have great comedy, comedic timing if you write comedy, comedy. But there's no way to protect it. You just have to do it. That's the only, only thing you can do is just write it and and then hope uh, that they don't take it, but it does happen. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Any other quick questions? Because we're going to get, we're going to wrap it up. Okay. I know my Raydell. Now she'll stay here because that's, that's her heart. Yeah. All right. Yeah. My heart is that. Bye. But no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. Shane, I love you, and you have to know that I'm so absolutely proud of you too. What you're doing is. I mean, it's beyond amazing. It is just like, it is this, it's your dream. And you're so talented. And to just spread in the tree, the Chattanooga, Chattanooga rise, that's you, man. It's you all day. You're rising. You're, you're, you plant the seeds and you're spreading your love. And it's just growing. It's beautiful. We appreciate it. And yeah, we all have to work together and just keep on and, and uh, helping the kids. And, and so any of any kids that have if they want to email me, Shane, you can give them my email. Um, not kid. It doesn't have to be kid. Any writer. Okay, okay, okay. Wants to I know. You know what? I'm so, I'm so in tune to like, I'm looking at them. So I'm like, they're writing. What do they need? Because I, I mean, I didn't have mentors. I didn't have anyone to tell me anything. So, I mean, that's why anytime anyone asks me something, I, I can't resist, you know. I know. Um, I know. But thank you for having me. And it's been amazing. And um I can't wait to get to Chattanooga. We cannot thank you enough. Um, and um, again, special, special thanks and appreciation. Donna, you always keep me down. You always keep me down. You are a professional at this where I'm just like, hey, you know, let's talk. Um, <laughs> Likewise. <and> <laughs> thank I'm you very so appreciative. More. Thank you, Oh, that's right. Y'all talk about that. Yeah, there's the Delta connection over there. The <laughs> Delta connection. Um, hey, everybody have a great day. Uh, for more information about what we're going to be doing in the near future, um, we have an upcoming, uh, for folks right now, make sure you read our Coco magazine. That, you know, that takes a lot. Uh, go to our website, arisechild.org. Look at the Coco magazine. Uh, the theme for this month that we uh, listed was that this virus will not kill our culture. Um, take a look at it. It's a fantastic, um, very very good issue this month. Uh, we feature a lot of mental health awareness things with inside of it as well for people of color. I beg for you to take a moment. It is free. Everything that we do is free. We try our best. We try our best. So on that note, dog, please take a look at our website uh, for upcoming events. Again, Raynell Swilling, a.k.a. Ray Ray, uh, thank you. Thank you, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Everybody else have Bye, a blessed evening. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.